Tēnātātou katoa, good evening. King Charles's coronation had also been hailed as a groundbreaking event for Kingitanga, but instead it started with an embarrassing blunder. For the first time in history, Māori to be represented at the crowning of the monarch. But a welcome for the New Zealand delegation left the Māori king offended and the High Commissioner filled off red-faced. Europe correspondent Lisette Raymer reports. King Charles's life mirrors that of King Tuhaitia in many auspicious ways. Both sons of adored long-reigning queens with big crowns and kurawai to fill. This coronation will be the first a Māori king has ever been invited to. And this morning, his spokesperson and the first lady of Māori dim, Dame Nader Glavish, were both speaking with stirring optimism. What will take place here in London uh, is, is astronomical, is profound, is, is, is unfounded. The candle of hope is glowing. By the afternoon, joined by their fellow coronation invitees, there was plenty to smile about until there wasn't. The High Commissioner, Phil Goff, welcoming a room of distinguished guests, including the Māori King, with this blunder. Hands up anyone here that has been to a coronation before or was even alive when there was a coronation. King Tuhaitia quick to raise his hand. The mistake laughed off. But not really, not at all. I've actually just expressed significant disappointment at what has taken place here. We have our own coronation. It is somewhat offensive <coughs> to suggest that we don't by only recognising Pākehā coronations. And this was after Goff had already forgotten the karakia at the start of the hui. The Prime Minister looked pale. The High Commissioner worked up an apology. Uh, my apologies if the protocol uh, did not meet your expectations. But the early hope and promise of what the new monarch's era could mean for Māori was quickly reduced to strange smiles and a reality check. I think we can do better at tikanga. The Crown has wounds to heal all over the Commonwealth. Campaigners from 12 countries have written a letter to King Charles asking him to acknowledge the horrific impacts of colonisation with a formal apology upon his coronation. The Māori Party has now signed that letter. Today, there is no doubt that there's opportunity to correct past errors and I think Queen Elizabeth attempted to, but King Charles can do. Dame Nader Glavish's words so rousing, a London city gardener overheard and gave her some flowers in support. A relationship is blooming in Britain that Māori only hope can translate into meaningful progress closer to home. Well, kia ora, Lisette. The Māori King is on his way to Buckingham Palace today, where you are there now. Do you think things will go a little bit more smoothly there? Well, everyone is desperately hoping that they do, Sam. King Charles will host all of the heads of state here this evening in what really is the business end of the coronation preparations. Security is certainly ramping up. The VIPs are all in town. Even the Prince and Princess of Wales have admitted they are a little bit nervous about the rapidly approaching big day. They made the confession during a surprise trip to a very busy London pub during which they were absolutely swarmed by the crowds. Prince William had the opportunity to pour a pint behind the bar. He did very quickly admit and joke that perhaps he was better at drinking pints than pouring them. But certainly you get the sense that the excitement is, is building, not just amongst the crowds and the fans who have turned out for this event, but also among the royal family. Lisa Raymer live from Buckingham Palace. Tēnā koe. Two New Zealanders will be extremely close to the King and Queen on Coronation Day. They'll be walking alongside their newly crowned King's coach in the procession. Alexa Cook was at their final rehearsal. In a sea of synchronised camo, our Kiwis in khaki and blue stand proud and stand out from the 32 other nations. 21 New Zealanders are part of the King's coronation procession. including Harris Tien from Auckland and Jess Hansen from Palmerston North, who'll be up close and almost personal. 
were marching either side of the carriage, uh, escorting the king from Westminster Abbey to the Buckingham Palace. They'll be right alongside the second wheel of the gold state coach, with an arm's reach of the king, but no touching and no selfies. Oh, it's pretty nerve-wracking to be honest. Although he's already met Charles in 2019 on a royal visit to New Zealand. I wasn't expecting for him to stop right in front of me and be, hey, how's, how's it going? How do you feel about seeing him you know, in person? So pr close? Pretty excited, but I have a job to do, so I'll be keeping my eyes front. And legs crossed. What happens when you need to go to the bathroom? Oh, that's a good question. They just hold on. <laughs> it's that simple. It's that simple. The logistics of 7,000 marching military is anything but. We all step off at the same time, on the same foot, at exactly the same second, so it's quite impressive. This is the final full practice ahead of the real deal on Saturday morning at the coronation. It's the last chance for them to perfect these steps and iron out any creases. Like flying tents and keeping to the beat. I'm as ready as I'll ever be. So is Oscar-winning composer Andrew Lloyd Webber, who's in charge of the coronation music. He says the king has one wish for the anthem. The anthem he hoped would be hummable. Um, all I can say is, is that I'm humbled, but I'm hoping it's going to be hummable. And in 24 hours, things will definitely be humming. Well, Alexa joins us now live from outside number 10. Kia ora, Alexa. The Prime Minister's announced an upgrade to New Zealand's free trade deal with the UK. That's right, and this agreement was supposed to come into, a, uh, into force at the end of this year. Instead, it'll be in action in just three weeks. Now, getting this agreement over the line has been a priority for Hipkins this week in London, and in just two hours, he'll be meeting here with his British counterpart, Rishi Sunak, where they're going to talk trade, they're going to talk about Ukraine and climate change, and Hipkins says he'll be thanking him for ratifying this deal so soon. Now, the agreement, of course, is a big boom for Kiwi X, exporters and business, but also for the New Zealand tech industry. It means that New Zealand businesses uh, will be able to invoice UK customers and be paid immediately. So it really is a deal that's going to benefit many Kiwis in many different ways. Alexa, tēnā koe. And you can watch the coronation live here on 3 tomorrow night with coverage starting at 7pm. And if you're hosting or attending a coronation event tomorrow, we'd love to know about it. You can send us your videos at news at newshub.co.nz.